Well, it sounds cool. Some space invaders. Morning, folks. Welcome back to the farm. We are we're on the fencing today. I'm feeling excited about it. What are you sat on? You look like you're I'm 20 years old in there. Shopping bag. Oh, chicken feet. All right, we can't drive all the way up to the top, so I've got electric fencing up. What we're gonna use is box trainers. We've got the posts in already, and ordinarily a chainsaw would make sense, but we're not gonna do that, because you know it's noisy and there's two of us around. There's a circular saw in there and some drills and stuff. All right, here we are then. These are the two in question. We're gonna need this about here. Yeah, but this could be knocked down a bit lower. Um, oh, knock it down my hammer. Huh, good luck. I do strong work. Just a little bit more. Maybe we should get a bigger hammer. Do you like my bubble? Yeah. wonder what he's doing. I'll go and see. Looking for a better steak. Up. Fits perfect. Well, maybe I went made a little bit too big. I pull it. Do we want this level or do we want it level with the ground? Is the next thing. Because if we put it level, it's going to be there. Go on then, hit it in the end first. Like that Gentle, way. Yeah. Just to knock it in. Yeah. Okay. okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me pull it. Okay. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> I was going to say, can I push them? I don't really trust your hammer. Go on. Oh, two more little taps. Get it in the middle. Not too much. One more. Lovely. Alright, we've pulled that tight with the grip all. And you're gonna cut this off. That's pretty solid now. Can I go and take it? So. Oh, the gun's coming out! There's quicker ways to do that, but. Can I have a cup of tea? Yeah, we'll get check if it's in the truck now. What? Um, uh, what? Oh, we're gonna chuck it. Chuck it, yeah? Chuck it. Chuck it or truck it. Okay, so we're on to our second one. This took way quicker because we now know what we're doing. So uh, come on in and I'll show you what improvements we've made. So this here is the sort of housing I really wanted. So it's really tight in there. It goes in probably 20 mil, maybe a little bit more. And that's super solid. And as you pull it tight, it just seals up around it instead of drilling a great big hole and having gaps around, which is just what I didn't want to, I wanted to avoid. That's what the other posts were like. Now over here, Again, I've just notched top and bottom with the circular saw. And then we've cut it to length and slid it in. These nails went in way better. These are with the nail gun. They're 90 mil nails. They're not obviously the thickest nails, but they are perfectly adequate for this. They're holding it in place. And now we've tightened everything up with the figure of eight. 
there's no way that anything's going to budge. They're almost just locating it. So that is number two, and we're halfway there on number uh, number three. But the other one took like an hour and a half to do. All right, we're getting better. And that, and that one only took 15 to 30 minutes. So 15 3D. to 30? Well, yeah. 15 to 20, you mean? No, 15 to oh. mm, mm, I don't know. I'll film a bit of this too. Okay, it's just trying to get the face of this notch to be kind of in line, otherwise it's not going to sit flush. I think it needs to be squared up a bit. The difference with doing this that I don't mind is, whereas with the creosote and the treated timbers, every time you cut into it, you're exposing like virgin timber that will basically rot quicker. Because we're going for a, these hardwood posts, any cuts, as long as water's not getting in anywhere and trapping, we're not exposing anything that's less durable. Right, let's just neaten that up. This post could do with going out a little bit. So what I'm thinking is make this a little bit long and then we'll try and force it in. We should mm. have brought a sledgehammer really. Let me show you in here as well. So that is the little mortise and they have drilled it out, chiseled it square. And now that will go in. But as soon as we start tightening it up and force it in, it'll bury itself in a bit more. So we'll give this a fair of whack. Just to get it right in. Okay, I'm gonna make it about eight, 10 mil longer than we need. Not, uh, maybe a little bit less. And then we should be able to force it in. Mm. <laughs> Solid. I would put three in. No, no, no. Right, this is the main downside I found of these posts. Uh, one that, well, I guess that some people would say downside is that they're rustic, but we're embracing that. But getting a staple in. So these are 40 mil staples, proper heavy duty tornado staples. And that's probably the shortest out of, you know, most people use 45, but 40 is fine. So we're going to come across and put it in here, but just watch what this timber does to these staples. Just go around here a bit, even kind of going to clout you. So it starts off absolutely fine. And it's just, can you see that? It's just starting to balloon out. They don't go more than 10, 15 mil in before they start distorting. What's worse is I've bought a big Milwaukee fencing stapler and it's no better and you can't hand finish them. But there should be a tool in the post today which is gonna help that. But it's not here for now, so we might be able to bring it down and use it to finish these staples off, but that's for another day. Let's try and get this one in. All this is really doing is locating the wire so it can't slip down. We can add another staple or knock this one in further in the future. All right, you good with the wire? Yep, the difference. In what? The staple that's went in and the staple that came. Uh, right. I've gone through the bottom. So round this way. That's number three done, we've got one more left. It's the big one down the far end and get that one in and then we'll be at a point where we can strain the whole wire 
along the whole thing to get our fence line in ready and get some posts in. Okay, that side, he's going to go in there. You can hear how hard this timber is. I feel like you just don't want it to be loose, so I'm going to keep pounding it in. I'll bring a bigger hammer next time. Okay, I think it'll go actually. Middle to me. That's so, so solid. Just listen to that. You could basically play a xylophone on this one. Or is it a glockenspiel? That's super tight, happy with that. That's good, let's get a nail in there. Get wrapping up. Right, the girls have gone for a walk with some friends, so they've taken out some of the electric on the way down. I'm going to clear all that, and I'm going to strain in this, what we, what we basically are using it like a string line, but it will also become our bottom line of the fence. So let's try and use a whole roll, or a longer roll at least. Uh, this should be alright here. Sit that in a bit more. Might grab a glove for grip. Well, that's all the wire in and the electric out. So I think these are all on the right side of the post. Uh, this is on the right side of that turner and that one and that one. And I've tied it off the other end. So that's all good. So now we're going to bring it, bring it back along all the way to the right hand side of this box strainer and what am I doing? No I'm not. See I don't have, I'm going to get one tomorrow so I should wait but this is less of an issue. Uh, I don't have a wire strainer. I've just got, I've got a boundary fence strainer which hooks onto something because it's got a chain but it won't grip onto this. So for that reason I'm going to have to put a sort of three meter length of wire in here. I can tie it off around here or use the T gripple. And then I'm just gonna pull this tight with the gripple tool. And that's fine, it's just giving us that line. I'll have to walk up and down a bit to kind of ping it and loosen it all up a bit and just make sure it's following the lines. Uh, but that's what we need to do. So I need to get an extra little bit. I'm probably gonna end up T grippling the end of the stock fence, but single wire I'm kind of getting the hang of. So we're on the field side of these posts, I think, for the netting. So we'll go down quite low and see if I can get this right. Tighter. First one's a loose one. And then I'll go three tight ones. Get a little bend up. Over, under. Turning. Hmm. Need to work on that. All right, let's get well past where we need to be. Like I said, this bottom line is less important. But I will try and get one of those wire 
attention is. Hello. Hello, dog. Don't go through there yet because the dog is the sheep. Literally went in and then got it too comfortable. Is, is she alright with sheep? I don't want to Right, see if we can walk this along now. And hopefully, we could shout to Joe. Joe, can you just lift that wire up and ping it? Just to. I'm trying to get it tight all the way to the far end. That's getting tight. Just this tension between the tool and the jaws of this is so tight that I can't back the spring up on this. Well, it sounds cool. Sounds like Space Invaders. I think that's tight enough now. That's taken probably about 200 kilo or something like that. I dialed down the torque setting. So as you can see, that's given us a really straight line. You probably can't see. That's too straight for my liking. I'm gonna try and uh, just put in a real gradual curve just for this section before it straightens up. Uh, and I think that's easy enough to do just with these intermediate stakes now it won't be until tomorrow that we start driving these in and there's a new gadget to help us with that um, but what i want to do is see if i can just get them all ready to go and they should stay up right overnight uh, and instead of piloting them with uh, anything fancy i've found an old bale spike in the back of the barn and hopefully that'll do the job now i'm not going to put these ones in quite yet because i need to roll these telegraph uh, pylons out of the way i have no idea how i'm going to do that yet should we do that first? Let's do that first. Who put a flipping high tensile wire in the way? I'm aching just thinking about this. Never gonna get strapping, but that's right. Do I go and get more straps or do I just try and roll them? Hopefully this will give me a kick up the backside to build a bridge. But we all know they'll probably end up sitting here all winter. Yeah, I think I've written off my wrist and my shoulder on the first day. It's not good. I'm not even sure if the plan was to build it out here on the field and then get next door to telehandler it into place. I'm not even sure if it would lift it at that reach. There's over a ton in them. As I was saying, I'm going to get some of these posts in, pilot them, stake them in, and then we'll come and bang them in tomorrow. Um, the cloth.
Well, there we go. That's our first day of learning. Uh, obviously, I've kind of been looking over the shoulder of um, Tom and Rob and people who've been doing fencing here whilst we've been around over the past year. However, like I've alluded to in the last video, everyone's just flat out with the work at the moment and I need to get this in. So we've got to do it ourselves, which is fine. And I don't think there's going to be any issues. Um, it's just a case of, well, one, getting it done before the weather completely turns, but also trying to get the big posts in when I've got Craig around or maybe just get Tom in for a weekend uh, or for, for a day at a weekend to bang in the big posts. Because I feel comfortable now getting all these strainers done. I don't think um, there's much more to it than what I've done. Um, and if anything, I'm probably a little bit more fussy than others might be. So I can take a bit longer on it. Um, or maybe I just take longer. Anyway, let me show you how we're getting on with these posts. All right, here's our gate post. We don't need him for a while. So we'll leave that as is. Uh, that's one of four, the box strainers. And I'm really pleased with it now. Um, took one to learn and now i'm pretty well versed and i know i showed you earlier but here's how we're looking nice and tight scribed in because all these are irregular it's not like a machined post down to a perfect point um i've wanted to make sure that's nice and tight so that's in all the way around and it, as you pull it tight it kind of really binds in there uh, and then it notched in here nailed and our figure of eight so that's all good then that bottom line runs out now i was just impatient so i've actually used the post banger to get in these two but as i alluded to we've got something else to help us tomorrow so we will not be th thankfully we won't be doing them all by hand but i was surprised using that baling uh, that bail spike really helps and obviously the ground's soft at the moment as well it didn't take that much effort to get them in with the um with the post banger so if we ever need to get a few more in along a hedge line where i can't get anything uh anything up in access or anything or in amongst trees there's that's always an option pylons are out of the way they're going to sit there for months on end no doubt and this is how we're looking so all of these are probably in by about i don't know eight to ten inches I, i've piloted them with that spike which helps and they're all in line now so you see here's the line I've just use it like a string line so that's nice and straight the first actual turn is this post here which was put in with the machine so although it's not knocked all the way down it's like splitting that was an eight foot post so it's absolutely solid so that's kind of the apex of our corner and then it straightens out again up there and I, now I know to decide whether I'm just going to stick on a perfectly straight line all the way up uh, which I think I will uh, or whether I curve it a little bit more it's quite misleading because with the truck I haven't driven in a perfect straight line uh, so it makes the fence line look a little bit odd um, but we'll decide on that tomorrow I think it should be fine there's a couple here like this one i picked out mainly straight ones for this run because i thought it was really obvious that this one i might swap out but i can't be fussy because these are going to have to be used at some point so i'll be using some of the bent ones up in the hedges um, and if they have got a slight curve to them what i'm doing is i'm putting the curve let me try and explain I'm trying to put the curve this way so if you're looking at the net you know it curves left to right or whatever here whereas if it curved and bowed out left to right when you're looking down the fence line, then it would throw the netting and it would look odd. So I've put, picked the straight face of all these and that's why they're looking pretty decent. Um, but obviously I can twist them just before I bang them in. And they're looking back up. You can see that is our turner. So you can just, we'll tuck the net behind that one like we have the with the wire. Um, and actually the two posts either side of the turner I've left it on the back of it as well, just so it's a real gradual turn. And we should be all good. My shoulder is absolutely wrecked already. Um, hopefully I can nurse that overnight and then we can crack on tomorrow, get these in. I'm gonna go out first thing tomorrow. I'll have a look at the weather. Go out first thing tomorrow and pick up the netting. I've got a couple of rolls of 100 meters uh, of sheep net, but this is probably 
240 meters i hope it's no more than that and i can get a 250 meter roll and that means i can just roll out and stretch it in one uh, the other option is to strain it in the middle but i would then need two netting clamps um, and pull them so i can't really do that i need to strain it onto a post 250 meters will just do this I'm really doubting that now. I hope it does it. Anyway, 250 meter roll also weighs 150 kilo. Uh, so that is gonna be a little bit of pain. I can bring it down here on the trailer and obviously get it lifted on the other end. And then if it's down here, I'm just gonna have to roll it out. I haven't got any sort of contraption to unreel it. Uh, and we're gonna have to go around the back of the post. Oh, it's going to be fun. Anyway, we'll leave that for tomorrow. Thanks for watching. If you've got any comments, stick them down below. If there are any uh, critical comments, well, I will have probably already done the next stage before I read your comments. So uh, be kind and uh, I'll take them on board for the next phase down in the next field. Right, I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.